Hello and welcome back to another World of Warcraft Warlords of Draenor video straight from BlizzCon itself. So today's, um, well, this video in particular is going to be about PvP. And honestly, I am extremely excited about the PvP changes that they're making. And I think these are exactly some of the things that I personally wanted to uh, reinvigorate the PvP scene and get me interested in it again. So let's go over all the different things. Now, they are making a new world PvP zone. They're also doing some UI improvements and some switching around of Battleground rewards. They're also adding a new system in called Trial of the Gladiator, which personally um, seems absolutely fantastic for the hardcore PvP person who really wants to get their competitive game going. Now, for World PvP, there is a new island and it has faction bases and hotspots, so essentially it's an island that's crammed full of different features and I suppose different things to do. But the interesting thing about this is that it is a 100% persistent, always active PvP sandbox. I think this is just damn cool. They already said in a way that it's the timeless isles of PvP. In terms of location, it's a staging area near the Dark Portal. Now, the way this works is that you're free to go in and PvP as much as you want. You can do things like getting in siege vehicles and destroying enemy bases. So it really is a mixture of so many different PvP elements. And perhaps a little bit like the original Alteric Valley, but I'd say definitely an evolution of it. It is a persistent war in the zone that swings back and forth as time goes on, based on how players are. And there are lots of different objectives the players can do. There are siege vehicles, enemy bases, mines, loads of different things. And it also uses cross-realm tech, and this is what I think is really brilliant. The cross-realm tech ensures that it's always balanced in terms of faction-wise. They don't have to do things like what they did with Wintergrasp, where people would actually have to queue for Wintergrass, which essentially made it a battleground. No, in this you can go in and out as much as you want, and the cross-realm system will mean that the place is always balanced. And I know that perhaps this isn't as good for server cohesion, but I think that a lot of the serious PvP players would agree with me in that having a balanced experience is the best thing possible. And also I think the fact that there's multiple objectives prevents this from just being zergs of players running around the place. Maybe there's still zergs of players, but perhaps there's more zergs of players doing different objectives, which all in all makes things more interesting. Now you can also build siege vehicles, and I actually saw things saying that it could even take multiple days to build a certain kind of siege vehicle, and they showed off some great concept art for them, and essentially these, um, some of these siege vehicles will just be the rudimentary things we have at the minute, but some of them will be very powerful, and you can really go and dominate the battlefield for as long as the thing survives for, which, honestly, if it's a big strong thing, probably won't be too long. Now they've also changed the UI for Battlegrounds, which show the cap time for things like flags and where people are fighting at, different things like that. Essentially it's just a ro more robust map. They have also introduced a concept ba called Battleground Score, and this shows essentially how much a player has helped to contribute to the team. A lot of the time people just sort by damage done or killing blows. Instead this is something which will give you a combination of your healing, your damage, your caps, your everything put it into one nice number so you can see like the person at the top is just going to be the best all-round person for their team and I think that's really cool and hopefully it will encourage people to play uh, play a little bit better. That was also a new bonus reward system. They said the PvP is too deterministic reward wise. You can essentially look at your cap and think okay well this week I can get X, Y and Z. Well nope not anymore. Well there's still the same system for getting honor and stuff like that, but they've added a new thing. You can get a chance of a loot drop after a battleground, probably only after a victory or something like that. And uh, from what I can see here, it's things like extra items, such as, I don't know, a pair of legs or something, extra honor, bind on equipped gear, and uh, more. And I'm assuming the more could be pets or mounts or interesting things like that. Now, in addition to this, they've also added a system called Trial of the Gladiator, and this is focusing in on the arena system. And, uh, it's, it's quite cool. This is essentially a thing that it looks like will happen either at certain times of the day or certain times of the week. And by concentrating this down, they can monitor things like wind trading, etc. Now, the Trial of the Gladiator is limited of availability in terms of time. It has tournament rules. And it's actually a little bit like the arena server. You can go and buy gear so that everyone will have the exact same amount of gear for when they do Trial of the Gladiator. That you then go into the standard arena style combat. And um, yeah, it's essentially a more... I guess just a more fair, more competitive thing. Basically, if you're a hardcore PvPer, you can go in and do this. Now, some of the great things about this are that it's more of an event and that it happens certain times throughout the week from what I can tell. And the nice thing about that is any bugs that happen, Blizzard can hone in on them instantly. Anything like wind trading, there's sometimes people would uh, go in 4 a.m and they just start win trading to increase their rank. This won't really happen anymore with Trial of the Gladiator, so it unfairs a nice level base playing field where the only thing that matters is skill, because you'll just buy this normalized gear to go in 
and um, that's really it. Even if you're a PvE player, you can jump right into this, but the thing is, since it's skill-based, you're probably still going to be dominated by the PvP people. At the end of the day, if you are a skilled player, Trail of the Gladiator should be something that you absolutely love. And that's it for PvP. Now, they didn't announce any new battlegrounds or any new arenas, but of course there are going to be new battlegrounds and arenas, we just don't know about them yet. This was more talking about systems. There is probably going to be more PvP announcements as BlizzCon does go on, so be sure to be subscribed to the channel because I will have a video on it as soon as I know. But for now, this is all the news I have for you. Thank you very much for watching, please like if you like, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>